Hello fellow coffee botherers, in this video we're going to be talking about the descaling problem, also known as the three beeps error, or the three beeps of death. Since I started the new dual boiler series, the number one question I've had in emails and comments is related to an issue people have had with descaling their dual boilers, and the same with the Oracle and Oracle Touch. Other people who've asked about this are telling me they've been put off buying one of these because they've seen so many people complaining about this apparent fault with descaling. So in this video, I'm gonna explain what is the descaling problem, what causes it, what can you do to fix it if you do get this issue, and how can you make sure you never have this issue? So what is the descaling problem? This is an issue that happens after descaling in which you turn the machine on and it beeps three times and the steam boiler doesn't heat up, which is why some people refer to this as a three beeps of death. So this three beeps issue indicates that the steam boiler won't heat up. You can't steam milk, although you can pull shots as this issue doesn't affect the brew boiler. So what causes this issue? So if you've never heard this three beeps issue, this is what it sounds like. There are two issues, both that can be caused by the descaling process. The first one, and the most common one, is an airlock in the boiler. The second one is a blown thermal fuse, but it's unlikely you'll have a blown fuse on the current versions due to a change they made on the later models. How do you fix it? The three beeps might not indicate this issue. If you're lucky, it's just a dodgy water filter. If you replaced your water filter in your water tank after the scaling, just try the machine without the water filter just once to see if you still get the three beeps. The reason for this is that new water filters sometimes harden up and need soaking for a lot longer than the instructed five minutes. If you have a water filter with this issue, it'll give you the same symptoms, so just try to eliminate this by removing the filter. If it does turn out to be the filter, brilliant. You've just saved yourself a load of time. Just soak the filter overnight and it'll be fine. So ruling that out, the next thing to ascertain is whether it's an airlock or a blown fuse. To test this is mega simple. All you do is make sure the steam boiler is empty by opening the right hand valve and letting it drain and then closing this valve again. Then turn on your machine and listen. If the pump engages and runs for about two minutes to fill the steam boiler, then that tells you it's not an airlock, it's probably the thermal fuse. If the pump only runs for a few seconds and then stops, that's good news as it means it's more than likely just an airlock. If that happens, turn the machine off, let it cool and then open the right hand drain valve. Turn the machine on and try to close the drain valve while water is flowing. Just try this a few times and see if you can remove the airlock this way. But only try this for a matter of seconds before you turn it off because if you have one of the older machines you could blow the thermal fuse doing this. I've heard that some people have had some success from carefully tilting the machine back and tapping it with the heel of their palm on the right hand side and then repeating the process I've just mentioned. So that's worth a try. If that works, happy days. Hey. If that doesn't work, it could be a sensor. It could be the pump, but I'd recommend at this point reaching out to an espresso engineer or to Breville or Sage support if your machine is still under warranty. You'll have to do the same if you think it's the thermal fuse. My espresso machine engineer friend Radu is the guy who gave me all of the technical info for this video. He's fixed loads of Sage machines for me and for people I've put in touch with him. So if you want him to help you, you can get in touch with him via his website, espressorepairshop.co.uk and I'll put his details in the description below too. One of the great things about this machine is that for people who know what they're doing, they're actually quite straightforward inside. Any espresso engineer will be able to take the lid off this and figure it out. It might look like a kitchen machine on the outside, but it's basically a commercial espresso machine on the inside. Obviously, it's a real pain to have to take a machine to have it fixed, but they're actually really straightforward to maintain and fix if you can find someone to work on them for you. How can you make sure you never have this issue? Ensuring this never happens to you is very simple, just two words, don't descale. Although this looks like a home coffee machine, they're designed internally based on high-end commercial espresso machines. This is what makes these machines so great, it's why they produce such amazing results. The only issue with a machine like this where descaling is concerned is that they can't be descaled like domestic machines where you simply flush the water intermittently through the steam wand and the group. You could do that with the brew boiler, but it's not the brew boiler that's usually the issue. They've put the drains in to try and make descaling possible without taking the machine apart, but as we've discussed, issues can happen when descaling this way, mainly airlocks. Now they appear to have stopped the potential issue with the thermal fuse blowing. If you're not the kind of person who's comfortable with taking espresso machines apart and tinkering with them, you'd be far better off using water that doesn't require regular descaling. 
If you're comfortable with DIY and you don't mind watching some YouTube videos to learn how everything works, descaling isn't an issue. If anything happens, you'll be able to sort it. Also, in this case, you'll be able to keep your dual boiler going strong for a long time by keeping it well maintained, which is the key to longevity with any espresso machine. The issue with some domestic espresso machines is you can't really tinker with a lot of them, even if you do know what you're doing, but that's not an issue with the dual boiler. But if this isn't you, if the thought of taking the lid off your machine makes you feel sick, then my recommendation would be to use soft water so you don't have to regularly descale it. These machines need to have a descale process because they've been purchased by home users, most of whom use tap water. But you don't have to use tap water, so if you want to use a high-end machine like this, but you don't want to face the potential challenges that come with descaling a machine of this level, you don't have to. So this leads to the question, how do you use soft water if you're not lucky enough to live in a very soft water area? The answer to this is to use an under-sink or countertop water filter or reverse osmosis system. I'm not going to go into detail about these here, but there are quite a few options out there. So if you do a bit of research, you'll be able to find out which one is the best for you. And I'll put some links in the description to point you in the right direction. If you don't want to do that, you can potentially use bottled water, but it's not quite that simple as most bottled water is actually quite hard. And the two that aren't hard in terms of TDS, Ashbeck and Volvic contain chloride, which can be corrosive to stainless steel. Also, using bottled water is nowhere near as good where costs or sustainability are concerned. So there you go, you now know what this issue is, the potential fixes and how to prevent it. If you need an engineer, get in touch with Radu at espressorepairshop.co.uk. Almonds are a member of the peach family and that has nothing to do with clicking the like button, but click the like button if you've ever hey. seen an almond or a peach or both. Thank you very much for watching. And if you love coffee and you've enjoyed this video, we've got tons of content about how to make better coffee at home to take you from beginner to home barista. We've got reviews and how to's on the most popular machines. If you like the sound of that, click on my face to subscribe. Tatty bye.